Hi guys. Uh, this is a test to determine how long the recuperator in this Hapson Lind air liquefier is going to have to be. That's one of the major questions I had because the, uh, I believe the patent it was about 100 meters long, and I'd like to run, not have to get 100 meters of uh, quarter inch and half inch copper tubing. So what I've got here is uh, the, what normally would be the cold end I have in a pot of boiling water to keep it hot. And the, you know, just measuring the temperature of this side of the uh, recuperator. I'll let that stabilize, and then we'll take the temperature of the hot end, the cold end, and the difference in temperature between the gas leaving it and the gas entering it. And from that, we can calculate uh, what kind of a temperature drop uh, we get across the across the uh, recuperator. There's actually quite a surprising amount of heat transfer taking place inside the recuperator. Uh, I did a quick calculation, and if you have uh, 10 CFM uh, gas flowing through the recuperator from uh, room temperature down to liquid nitrogen temperature, you need an average cooling power of uh, 1.3 kilowatts to get the uh, required delta T. And while doing that, you have to maintain a relatively small delta T between the two tubes. To, so that the uh, Joule Thompson cooling at this end can uh, keep up with it. So, um, if you use copper tubing like this, um, I, about 50 meters of this quarter inch tubing will equal one square meter of surface area. And I'm hoping not to have to uh, use any more than that. Uh, so, I think this is pretty much stabilized in temperature, so I'll take all the temperature measurements we can calculate how uh, effective this recuperator is. Okay, uh, the last measurement seems to have stabilized now. So the results are um, 63.4 degrees on the uh, hot side and 12.3 degrees on the exit of the uh, on the exit. Same gas, and the other tube, input tube, was 10.6. So. We have um, delta T from uh, the hot side to the cold side of 51.1 degrees and delta T from between the two input lines of 1.3. I'm not quite sure of the accuracy of this because uh, that calculation assumes that, that no heat is lost through the insulation, which we know is not correct. And if heat's lost through the insulation, that will skew the figures to show that the recuperator is more effective than it actually is. So we're going to try to figure out how to validate the accuracy of this. But based on these figures, it looks pretty good. I mean, this is a 50 degree delta T, we need about 200. So five times more, or four times more than we have right now, would result theoretically in a delta T in, in out of less than uh, 10 degrees, which it's pushing it a bit, but that might actually might work for liquefying nitrogen. Um, but I think I'd like it to be lower, maybe 2 degrees, so if we can get 5 times more tubing, about 25 meters, that theoretically might be enough. I was a little bit concerned with the accuracy of those uh, measurements I just took, so I repeated the test again with uh, a thermocouple on uh, this side as well. So now I've measured all of the temperature, all four temperatures on the hot side and the cold side. If you look at the results, we're getting around a uh, five degree difference on the hot side, and this time around a 2.7 degree difference on the cold side. So we are losing uh, quite a bit of heat through the insulation in the recuperator. But now we can make a more uh, accurate calculation as to the uh, recuperator efficiency. Okay, I've entered all the data uh, I just got into Excel, uh, did some calculations on it, um, and in the end f uh, I found that each uh, meter or one meter length recuperator, if you have a delta T of one degree from the hot side, cold side to the hot side, we get about 0.49 degrees between the uh, two tubes. So using that information, I've made a big uh, worksheet here, kind of 
Um, it intended to be this big, but they ended up being this huge design worksheet. Uh, I have all the constants at the top, um, system parameters, and just a quick estimation of the cooling performance. If we have uh, 10 CFM of airflow, um, using the Joule-Thompson coefficients from uh, Wikipedia, we get a cooling power of about 350 watts at um, liquid nitrogen temperature. That's actually pretty good. And if there's no losses, that would result in almost uh, 4 liters an hour uh, liquid nitrogen production. Looking at the recuperator design, there's that number we found from the test recuperator. Basically divide that by the length of the recuperator in meters and you'll get the ratio of the uh, hot cold temperature to, to the in-out temperatures. And if we, I just picked a value, reason, quite, actually quite a reasonable number, about 15 meters length, that's not that much tubing even if you have to buy it new. At full uh, liquid nitrogen temperature on one side, ambient on the other, we only get about 7 degrees uh, delta T, which is pretty good. I um, also looked at the heat loss through the insulation. Uh, I just picked some values for the sizes, or the thickness of insula insulation, diameters of components, and made some assumptions about the heat flow. Um, we end up getting about 55, 56 watts loss uh, through, the, through all the insulation, assuming the calculations are right. These are probably a little bit optimistic, but it's not too far off. And let's see, here's the cooling performance, estimated at various temperatures. Because if you look at the uh, Joule Thompson graph, it has you got much better cooling at low temperatures than at higher temperatures. So, assuming you can get down to low temperatures, it's fine, but you have to, getting through there, getting through this sort of mid portion can be difficult. Um, on this graph, the blue line, no, the um, green line is the net cooling power, the red line is the heat gain through the recuperator, heat loss through the recuperator, the purple line is the heat through the, going through the insulation, and once you calculate that all out, you've got this sort of um, dip in the middle where you have to get through it, where it's sort of halfway down to temperature but you lose some cooling power, because you're losing heat but you're not gaining extra cooling from the really low temperatures yet. Uh, but it looks like with this, these values of insulation thicknesses, something around uh, 15 to 20 centimeters of insulation around everything, and the 15 meter recuperator will probably be okay. Although it'll take some time for it to get down to temperature, we have less than 30 watts of cooling power. Yeah. So with that uh, 30 watts cooling power, if we assume there's about 3 kilograms of uh, material, iron or copper, in the system, um, it'll take It'll cool down at about 80 Kelvin an hour, so it's going to take probably an hour and a half to two hours to get down from room temperature to liquid nitrogen temperature. And if we just do a quick estimate of the uh, liquid production with um, the heat losses calculated above, looks like it looks like we'll get about a bit over two and a half liters per hour. So that's actually pretty good. For, uh, for the purposes of these calculations, I'm assuming that air is entirely nitrogen, which hopefully isn't too invalid a, uh, an assumption, because air is mostly nitrogen. I'll post this spreadsheet and uh, post a link to it if anyone wants to look at it or work, work through it for their own design. Um, hopefully you found this interesting. Thanks for watching.